In this video, we will cover all of the seller required disclosures for a California real estate transaction. Now, these are forms that are required by California state law that the seller deliver to the buyer in a sale of residential real estate between one and four units, so meaning a condo or single family home, all the way up to a four unit or fourplex property. And whether you are just interested in which forms are required or you've downloaded our bundle, this video will serve as a guide to help you go through all the forms and easily complete them so that you fulfill your, your obligation to the state. Now, I should mention that sometimes I hear sellers and buyers and they'll ask me if they can waive, if a buyer, a buyer might say, hey, don't worry about disclosures, I'll buy it as is, just I'll, I'll waive it, whatever. Well, the problem is that it's not up to the buyer to waive. This is a requirement from the state that the state places on the seller to deliver information to the buyer about any material facts that they may have and just basic information about the property. So the seller must deliver these forms. And even if it wasn't a legal requirement, it just is a smart move anyway because the seller is the party taking on all the liability so they want to make sure that they disclose everything that they know thereby reducing their liability as much as possible so we'll jump right into it now you'll see when you download the bundle we have a a list and instructions where we basically make three easy steps to to completing all the disclosures and <clears throat> It might look like a lot because in California there are a lot of disclosures, but we've we've ordered it where if you read through this, you'll see it's not as overwhelming as it might first appear. So you have the three steps here and then a list of the disclosures and it's basically a table of contents that shows you which pages you'll find which disclosure. <clears throat> Some notes uh, that will make it easier to understand what you're working with here and then Separately, you'll order a natural hazard disclosure. This is a state required uh, report, and we have instructions on what to do, uh, how to order it, where to order it. It gets made, it's custom made to each property, and then will be emailed to you, and you'll include it with all, with all these disclosures. And so, this is downloaded with the, the bundle. And we're going to go through this list of disclosures that we see right here and talk about how to fill them out. So let's jump over to that list right now. All right, <clears throat> so we are beginning with the transfer disclosure statement. And this is a, a fundamental disclosure form. So you'll start by putting the city and county that the home is or the property is located in, the street address, the date, and we're going to move on. Now, sometimes the seller will have some reports or disclosures that they want to include. Let's say a seller did a termite report or for whatever reason, there was some sort of engineering report that was done recently on the, on the property. If the seller is in possession of any of these reports that they just randomly got prior to opening escrow, you can check a box here and you can write in the names of the reports. So this is not something that you have to do yet. It's I'm just saying that if you are in possession, if you as a seller are in possession, like you've had worked on the property or an inspection or what something's happened recently, uh, you'll include it here. In general, you want to disclose as much as possible. So if you're holding on to any any paperwork from any recent matters affecting the home, then definitely include it. <clears throat> You're going to indicate here whether or not the seller is occupying the property, and then you're going to initial as the seller. Now down here, you know, this form is has some kind of random data fields, but this is a, a, a state generated template. This is from the state of California. So we're just working with the template outlined by the state. You'll check all boxes that of, of items that are, that are, part of the subject property and it's pretty straightforward you just if you see it and you you know that the property has such an item go ahead and check the box it asks you about the garage about the pool spa heater water heater now here's the big question that comes up for sellers what if i don't know what if i don't know 
keep this in mind, and this is a very important point I'm going to make. <clears throat> Disclosures aren't asking the seller whether this exists and if for sure this exists or not. They're asking the seller if they know if such thing exists. If the seller doesn't know, then they can't disclose it. So disclosures, uh, sometimes sellers get nervous thinking, well, I, I don't know and I don't want to put no and there really is a leak or there really is a certain type of fixture on the premises. What do I do? It's not asking whether it exists in an absolute. It's not asking you whether it exists uh, in a vacuum. It's asking you whether you know if it exists or not. Because there could be a roof leak, but you don't know because it hasn't rained for months. And so you put no. You put no if it asks you a question and you don't know definitively that the answer is yes. So keep that in mind. And I'll, I'll make another mention how that works in application on some of these, pro, uh, on some of these forums. But uh, just keep that in mind. It's asking you, do you know of this, yes or no? And if you don't know of it, it's okay. It's okay if it exists and you don't know. You just can't conceal something that you do know. So you're going to go through here. You're going to check boxes again. You're going to write in to the best of your knowledge. If all these are in operating condition, yes or no. And then you'll describe it. It's going to ask you about malfunctions on any of these items. And if you check yes, then you'll describe it. You're going to initial. And it gives you extra space here. If you checked a box and there's and the answer is yes, and you want to make further notes about that, you can write it in here. Now it's going to uh, go into a questionnaire portion of the form. And it asks you about certain substances that could be toxic, like formaldehyde, lead-based paint, etc. Yes or no? Again, it's asking, do you know of it? Not whether it exists in the world. It's just asking whether or not you know. And uh, you'll go through here. You'll read these questions. Uh, these are common ones. If um, there's unpermitted work that's been done on the property, or if there's something that is not in compliance with building codes, and you'll check the appropriate box to the best of your knowledge. You'll initial and you'll move on. There are further questions. CC and R's. If the property's in an HOA, then you're going to check yes here. If you uh, if you have questions of common area, again, that's very typical with an HOA. You'll check yes. But this is again asking you, do you know? Yes or no? And if you don't know, you don't know. And you're going to continue on lawsuits and there's extra space so you can give an explanation if you answered yes to any of the above questions and then you'll sign. We'll move on here. Now, if there's an agent involved, they need to fill out this portion. But if there's no agent involved, you can cross it out or you can write N.A. <clears throat> not applicable or just leave it blank. You'll initial here. And then finally down here, you certify the entire transfer disclosure statement. The seller is going to sign, buyer is going to sign. If there are agents, they sign. If there are not, they're going to put a line through this and cross it out. And we are done with the transfer disclosure statement. Now, the there's an earthquakes hazard report, and this is typically done on older properties, but we're trying to with this for with this disclosure bundle the idea is that we're we're going to overlap a little bit so if this is a newer home technically this isn't this isn't required but we put it in here because we we it was well, we want broad coverage um for the seller's protection so um and this is very simple you you'll just go through here you'll put your name the address and it's going to ask you questions and they even have don't know right there so other forms don't necessarily have the don't know, but this form does. But it asks you yes, no, doesn't apply, or don't know. So I highly recommend that you uh, fill this form out regardless of the age of your home. The more disclosing, the better. The more information you furnish to the buyer, the better. The more protected you are as the seller. We have um, something similar here. This is a receipt to a booklet. Now, when you download the, for the disclosure bundle, you're going to have a separate attachment that is going to include booklets. So when you do your 
disclosures, you're going to email this with the booklets over to the buyer. And that's mentioned in the, in the instructions that we, that we first looked at. So you're going to send this uh, to, the sell, to the buyer and have them sign, acknowledging that they received your, your booklet, Homeowner's Guide to Environmental Hazards. So these are basically, so both these for the earthquake and environmental hazards, these are just signature pages of acknowledgement that go along with booklets that you're furnishing that you can download on our site that come with uh, the bundle. All right, smoke detector compliance disclosure. Properties need to have smoke detectors and you'll put the property address here. Now, naturally, sellers will ask, well, where exactly? Because I have one or I have one located in a certain place. Well, you can read this location section here and it tells you precisely where you are required to have smoke alarms. You're signing that this is in compliance and you're delivering this to the buyer. Same idea with carbon monoxide detectors. And again, if you're asking where they should be, and it's a little bit different than the smoke detector placement. So you'll have this location section that you can reference. It's very helpful to, that tells you. This is this comes up a lot in real estate transactions. It's an easy fix. It's a requirement. As a seller, you do not want to convey real estate. Even if the buyer says, I'm going to tear it down, you don't want to convey it without having this in there because if anything happens, uh, let's say it's going to be a tear down, but the buyer lets people hang out in it in the meantime and something comes up, however unlikely it is, and someone gets carbon monoxide or smoke inhalation or some sort of issue and you haven't you didn't have alarms there, guess who they're going to blame? They're going to blame the seller. So no matter what, I mean, you can go down to Home Depot or wherever, get these, install them. It's a very easy fix. And uh, you just want to make sure you're in compliance. You're going to sign off as the seller and you're going to move on. Lead-based paint hazards. Same idea, you're telling them. And it even mentions homes built prior to 1978. If the home's brand new, this form isn't required, but again, like earthquake, we want to overlap. We want to make sure that if anything, we over disclose and not under disclose because with disclosures, it's very important that we're reducing the liability of the seller as much as possible. So you'll put the property address here. Uh, if the seller has any knowledge of lead based paint, they can write it in here. If not, leave it blank and then sign off as the seller and buyer's going to uh, initial. If there are agents involved, they're going to sign, and then the buyer is going to sign down here. Again, if there are no agents involved, you can write NA, not applicable, or just put a line through it, or even leave a blank. All right, moving on. Oh, there's a seller initial. One last seller initial down here at the bottom. Water conserving plumbing fixture disclosures. Disclosure, yes, this is a required form in California. And this explains that, so up until recently, you'll see the changes 2017, 2019, but basically California requires water conserving plumbing fixtures. And if your home doesn't have it, then you need to disclose that. And it, it explains what a non-compliant plumbing fixture is. And now keep in mind, this isn't a point of sale requirement of, of, of for compliance, meaning that the seller doesn't have to change anything. The seller doesn't have to retrofit their plumbing fixtures. They just have to let the buyer know that they're buying a home that has plumbing fixtures that aren't compliant. And it's going to ask you, the property con contains non-compliant plumbing fixtures, yes or no. And if there are non-compliant, then you'll write them in here. Non-compliant non -compliant plumbing fixtures, you'll itemize them in here. Seller is going to sign, buyer is going to sign, and we move on. Water heater compliance. Now, of course, water heaters need to be strapped in California uh, due to earthquake risk. It's going to explain uh, what the requirement is of the seller being in compliance. You'll put the property address. It's just the statement of compliance, seller is going to sign, buyer is going to sign, and we're done with the water heater. 
Now we're going to move on to the supplemental property tax disclosure. Now, this is important because property taxes for the seller are, ca are calculated on the seller's purchase price plus the increase in the assessment, but there's a cap on that uh, due to Prop 13. So the seller is going to be uh, likely paying lower property taxes than what the buyer will have. Now escrow prorates property taxes based on the, what the seller's uh, paying. So the buyer's paying their prorated property tax based on the seller's account. Well, what that means is that when the sale goes through and the county reassesses the value of the property, the property tax bill is very likely going to be higher and the, and the county is going to send a a bill for the discrepancy to the buyer after closing. So this is a common surprise for buyers where they close escrow and within 60 days, the county sends them a bill saying, hey, you owe us maybe thousands of dollars in property taxes. And the buyer is thinking, wait, I, I just paid them prorated and I know taxes aren't due yet, property taxes aren't due. This is giving the buyer a heads up that they're, that they're going to get this bill because this is a very common occurrence in real estate transactions so that the buyer can't freak out or take issue with anyone. So it's just an advisory, good measure. All right, buyer's going to sign to acknowledge and we move on. This form has somewhat of a complicated backstory, but I'm gonna make it very simple for you. The, in this form is actually a simplified version of what needs to be done, but this, this protects all parties and basically in real estate, the seller needs to do a, an affidavit. They're going to do it with escrow. And the affidavit is whether or not the seller is subject to a certain withholding. Well, to make this really easy, we have this form that meets what's outlined on the requirement for a, on the purchase agreement. The property address is going to go in here. The names of the parties are going in here. There's going to be an explanation right there. And then you're, as the seller, you're gonna send this over to escrow. And I, I believe we even have instructions here about, about this form. For, uh, yeah, right here, the last form, or well, it was the last form, but more forms have been added by the state. But it's gonna tell you right here, so just please send this form to the escrow officer. Nice little reminder. So you're just going to put the names of the buyers, buyer and seller, and you're going to send this over to escrow and they're going to be able to complete this for you. And then the, after escrow completes it, then the buyer is going to sign off. So that's it. This whole thing is boiled down to a simple process of property address, names of the parties, send it to escrow, get it back, and then make sure escrow signs, of course, they're the qualified substitute. And then the buyer is going to sign to acknowledge it. It's very easy. All right, fire hazard hardening and defensible space disclosure. This is a, a newer disclosure due to the prevalence of wildfires in California. <clears throat> and you're going to put your property address here. If there are features that of your home, of your property, that make it more vulnerable to fire, you're going to check the appropriate boxes if you don't know, then the answer is no. Again, it's yes or no, don't know. Home hardening inspection. If you're in the possession of an, of an inspection or required to have one, uh, you you can indicate the inspection here and deliver it to the buyer. And both parties are gonna initial here at the bottom. <clears throat> now keep in mind, there's a default section if you're in a jurisdiction, so if you're in an area that doesn't require a compliance inspection for having defensible space around a property so that it is at less risk of wildfire, then you can just leave, if, if, the, if your area, your jurisdiction does not require that, then you can just leave it as is. You don't have to check any boxes and you can move on and sign at the bottom. If there is a requirement or an ordinance or something else, please read B, C, and D and see which one applies to you and then check the appropriate box. But that's 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 the the only part of the form that in addition to this that you wanna you wanna read closely. You wanna read the vulnerability features and you wanna read 
if any of these pertain to your particular property. And I'm sure um, you'd know because you'd get a letter in the mail or you can check even there's a, a website uh, here that you can go on. It's through the state in terms of your home's vulnerability and measures that you need to take to be in compliance. This is the newest form that just came out that's required by the state. And that that's it. So now in addition to this, there's a natural hazard disclosure. And that's what you are ordering here. And it's going to have a signature page on it. So this will be emailed to you and to escrow. And you're going to have your buyer sign off on it uh, to, to acknowledge receipt that they're in possession of the disclosure. And so when you have this NHD, natural hazard disclosure, and you have all these forms and the booklets and it's delivered to the buyer, then you've fulfilled your obligation in terms of disclosures. If you have questions about any of this, then please do leave a comment and feel welcome to email info at openhometeam.com and we'll be happy to answer. And we do have a number for support. We have a phone number and an email for support. So if you've purchased the bundle and you get stuck, please reach out. We're happy to help you. I do hope that you found this video helpful and I thank you for watching.